Captain Jerry Nadler. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Director, uh, first, before I begin my questions, let me uh, congratulate you on, uh, what was on, on your role in standing up heroically against abuse of power as revealed in the last couple of days in the Washington Post with respect to a few years ago. And I, I mean that uh, sincerely. Now, I want to talk from, uh, ask a couple of questions about the anthrax investigation. Now, the FBI has said that um, uh, essentially that this fellow Ivins apparently uh, was the culprit, and he is, uh, of course, deceased. Now, in understanding the bottom line of the Bureau's investigation and, and how accurate we can take it to be, it's important to understand the actual nature of the murder weapon, that is, the anthrax that was sent through the mails. Scientists at the U.S. Armed Forces Institute of Pathology who examined the powder contained in the letter to Senator Daschle's office uh, said it contained silica. Now, some observers say the silica may have been a sophisticated additive designed to make the powder a more deadly killer. Now, this additive requires special expertise to apply to anthrax spores, an expertise that, according to his former boss at USAM RIID, the chief suspect, Mr. Ivan, simply did not have. Now, at a briefing last month convened by the Justice Department to lay out details of its case, government scientists said the powders in the attacks contained no additives, only some silicon, which they described as naturally occurring. Now, scientists say that a percentage of silicon higher than half of 1 percent has never been recorded in the scientific literature as naturally occurring. So if that percentage is higher than half of 1 percent, it would in be indicated that it was not natural, that it was added by a sophisticated uh, operator. So for the record, I want to ask you, what was the percentage of weight of the silicon in the powders that your experts examined? Uh, I'd have to get back to you on I that. I assume you were going to but say. But I, I will tell you that that, that yeah. issue came up early in the investigation. It was vetted not just by our scientists, but scientists around the, the country who specialize in this. And the last point I would make is that uh, we, as I indicated, we're in discussion with uh, uh, the National Academy of Sciences to, to do an independent review in which that issue quite obviously would be one uh, of those but, issues. But you can right? tell us what that percentage was. I, I believe I can, yes. Thank you. Now, if the percentage is greater than half of 1 percent or certainly greater than 1 percent, then that would be a strong indicator that the anthrax was manipulated deliberately to be a very sophisticated killer. There are only a handful of facilities in the United States which have been publicly identified as having the experienced personnel and equipment necessary to make anything approaching such an anthrax powder, including the U.S. Army's Dugway Proving Grounds and the Battelle Memorial Institute in Jefferson, Ohio, a CIA contractor. Were those facilities ever targets in the investigation? Uh, we, uh, using target is somewhat a weighted word in terms well, of, were they ever looked in terms at? of, in terms of uh, what we looked at in the course of the investigation, you can assume that we looked at every laboratory in the United States and several overseas that had both uh, the, the type of the Ames anthrax that we found in this case, but also had individuals capable of, uh, of uh, undertaking uh, the, the drying and preparing of the anthrax. Well, the if, if and, and the addition of the silica, if, that's, if, if that mm -hmm. proves to be the case. Now, if, uh, if, if, they, if these facilities were looked at, could you tell us how and why they were ruled out, since obviously they zeroed in on, uh, on uh, Fort Detrick and, and on Mr. Ivins? I, I would have to uh, um, get back to you on uh, individual facilities. Uh, I would think, as you're well aware, that uh, over a period of time, uh, we uh, developed a, a, uh, the genetic uh, uh, morphology of the anthrax uh, used in the letters, and uh, which was relatively unique, having four separate uh, distinct genetic markers. And that led uh, to identifying the vial uh, that uh, was labeled uh, uh, RM, RMR-1029 and was found in uh, Dr. Ivan's laboratory. And so there was a clear uh, identification of the anthrax in the letters uh, uh, back to uh, being referred or related back to the anthrax that was in the vial in uh, Dr. Ivan's laboratory, and that by in and of itself would give you one means of eliminating others, although to the extent that there was anthrax that had been distributed from that file, we traced all of that anthrax 
and uh, eliminated any other persons who may have had access or utilized that access as a suspect, which is well, part fi of Final the question. Do you agree, uh, as many have suggested, that there may be a need for an independent review of the evidence, especially given that bioforensics is such a new field, and would the Bureau cooperate with such an effort, and what possible downside could there be from such a review if it were, if it were to take place? Well, as I've uh, indicated, that uh, uh, we're in discussions with and are going to request um, the National Academy of Science uh, review the work that was done in uh, the course of this investigation. And, and it is an independent review by a panel of scientists that uh, will be pulled together by the National Academy. Uh, many of the scientists that the National Academy ordinarily would seek to have on a, on a panel are scientists that were already used in the course of the investigation. But as I say, we're, uh, the National uh, Academy is an independent uh, entity and will be conducting a review. Well, thank you. And I just want to say I hope you will get back to us relatively quickly with the weight of the, the percentage of the silica and why the, these other uh, uh, facilities uh, were, were ruled out. We'll do so, sir. Thank you. Thank I, you, Chairman Adler.